Hi guys, how are you? Very good. How was your weekend? Good, thank you. And um, I'm feeling nice and rested mm. because today I'm talking about tiredness. Ah, uh, fatigue. Yeah. Just be fatigue. I think. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Don't know where morning. that came from. <laughs> I think uh, there's a lot of us sort of going around dragging our heels or our knuckles. Oh, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. And I always fight. Like me and myself, I get tired as well. And I, I sometimes think, why? Why am I tired? <laughs> yeah. And I feel like I have to have a reason. You know why? So for you, and for myself, I suppose, but for you, you're getting up even earlier than me. Mm. So that could be why I do always have an excuse, but I know what you mean. Sometimes you're just tired and you don't know why. You're just, why am I fatigued? Yeah. Why do I, you know? Mm. Especially on days, like say it's a day off mm. and you're like, I slept till 11. Why am I tired? Yeah. So today we're going to speak about that because, you know, catching 40 winks isn't just uh, good for dark circles, but dreaming of your next vacation or anything like that is actually quite good to give your brain a clear out. Mm. Um, I found this in a recent study from the U- University of Rochester. It's revealed that getting really good time to sleep, you can clear out your cerebral clutter, shall we call it. So it gives your brain a nice little clean, okay? Um, and also in the Journal of Science, it shows that the brain's unique method of cleansing itself which is known as the glymphatic system, is highly active during sleep, mm. which means it cleans away toxins that would otherwise build up and trigger neurological disorders, such as Alzheimer's. Oh, wow. So that's why often if you have a really good night's sleep, you feel refreshed. Like, mm. you know, if you've sort of been traveling and you go to bed for like 11 hours, yeah. you wake up and you feel amazing. Yeah. It's often because you've had such a long time to sort of clear that clutter out. So, you know, it's nice to know these things, but what if then you're not feeling sort of bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on this morning, on this Monday morning, mm. um, I'll give you seven reasons today why that may be. So listen and let's just see for any of these. Number one, which I think is really common, is you're dehydrated. So a lot of us here are very guilty. We're not drinking enough water. So without adequate fluid intake, our blood pressure actually drops. So it slows the delivery of oxygen to your brain. And that's why you yawn. Mm. And Laura has done this in exercise before. Yeah, I do sometimes. I'll be yeah. running away doing something. I start yawning. I'll yeah. like, breathe more, breathe more. And it's because there's not enough oxygen yeah. going to your brain. So that can come in the sense of, like Laura said, she's not breathing enough during exercise. Or if you're not hydrated enough, your blood pressure has dropped. So you really need to make sure and drink enough of that. So the amount of fluid, you know, it always... I'm yawning now. She's she yawning now. Yawns. See, it's infectious. <laughs> I'll be going next. Oh my goodness, I am. So of course, the amount of fluid always, you know, it's a bit of a, a varied amount. But I always try and say, you know, two and a half to three litres. Get you going to that bathroom, um, flushing everything out. So make sure you're hydrated. And we all know how to check if we're not. There will be a yellowy colour in your urine, I'm afraid. It will be like apple juice colour. Mm. Not very nice. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Number two, why you may be tired. It could be your thyroid. So you might have heard about this, overactive thyroid. It sometimes sounds like an excuse for some people. I'm not sure. But So how does it affect you in a fatigue? I've heard of it with weight gain, but how does it affect you when it comes yeah, to being tired? It is one of these things that a lot of people, I think now, they're looking for solutions to why I'm overweight. It must be my thyroid. Mm. So... The, the an overactive thyroid it's a gland that if it is overproducing you lose a lot of weight mm. if you're if it's underproducing you gain weight so basically what happens is the hormones that control sleepiness and hunger is underactive so it's a common cause of oversleeping but basically quite hard to pinpoint without a doctor you need to get a test done it's just a blood test So if you're feeling sluggish but you're getting plenty of sleep then I would maybe think about getting a check on that but I will say this, it's quite rare. Mm. So people go and get their thyroid checked. I've actually had mine checked for being overactive and it wasn't. So, you know, it's like, it's probably not going to be that, to be honest. But it could be something worth getting a check, especially if it's been in your family as well. Yeah. So it basically comes from that. It's a gland that is either overproducing or underproducing and affects your weight as a sign of that being out of whack. Yeah. So that's basically all it is. But yeah, um, number three of the reasons you may be tired is, I'm going to mention this, it's, it's actually alcohol because alcohol is a poison and it, you know, it can really affect how you sleep quite a lot. So it's something just to bear in mind and there's a lot of chemicals in there that disrupt your sleep pattern. So you might have had eight hours sleep, but it would have been not at the full deep REM level. So you have crazy dreams, you're tossing and turning a lot and you would wake up feeling pretty rubbish because of the poison in your system so yeah it could be that as well so it's something to think about if you're having that on a daily basis then it could really be affecting your sleep patterns something else that's quite interesting is have you ever heard of sleep apnea yeah i don't know much about it but yeah. i know there are very sleep disorders and that's and this is one of them yeah there are i mean there's lots of these sleep disorders don't people walk sleepwalking night and terrors and... i actually i actually the other night last week actually i woke up my husband <laughs> i 
never do this. But I woke up my husband and I said, there's someone in the room. Mm. I never do that. And I honestly think I went to bed starving. Mm. And I just, I remember feeling like I was so hungry. And I just don't know if it's something to do with like, you're hungry and it's it's your body sending all these crazy hormones. I don't know. But I never have dreams like that. And I was convinced there was somebody in the room. It was just this strange thing that mm-hmm. happened. Not quite a sleep disorder. Just the way to freak your husband out yes, in the middle and, of the and night. for him to say, Make sure he's on guard. I, the dog kept sleeping. The dog never knows. <laughs> <laughs> no one was there. <laughs> but no, it, there are a lot of sleep disorders, like you've said. Um, and obviously, if you're if you're feeling tired, you would know if you had a sleep disorder because maybe your spouse or somebody would have said, look, you're up all the time. You're doing this, you're doing that. But normally you're tired. It's just simple little basic things like... You're not eating enough, you're eating too much. You're not drinking enough water. These sort of things. But sleep apnea, it's actually when you wake up because you stop breathing. Mm. So it tends to come with people who are obese because it's too much pressure on the lungs. So it's so much pressure on the the chest area that you will (gasps) and sort of wake up. You can't breathe. So it's quite quite rare. We're talking 3% of you know the population of not even Qatar of like this study was in America so it would be mm, there mm. so it's quite it's quite rare but it is it's quite scary so if you're snoring or you're overweight then these are things to to point towards maybe it will develop into sleep apnea over yeah. time so definitely speak to your doctor about that it's just basically you need oxygen so you might have to have a nebulizer or something like that but mm. again it's pretty rare so I don't think that'd be one of the main reasons something that could be a reason though that some of us are feeling quite tired Naps. Naps. Ever go for a nap? I, I'm a terrible napper. Oh, really? I really can't. I mean, and as well, considering that I should nap during the day, probably to try and catch yeah. up on some sleep. I can't. I wake up and I hate the world. Yeah. I'm, I have yeah. to apologize to people. When I nap. <laughs> I, I've been for a nap. I'm sorry. I'm going to snap at you. It's not your fault. I'm being irrational. But no, 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 no. And know. do you know why that is? I'm guessing I'm feel, I'm drugged by the hormones that exactly, are released during exactly. sleep. If you guys were listening to us, we spoke about sleep before, didn't we? Mm. And we spoke about why you wake up fuzzy head and grumpy sometimes. Like like me with that nightmare, if you're woken up abruptly as well, it's because you haven't burnt off this chemical or hormone called adocinine in your body. So it gives a fuzz effect to the brain. I hate naps. Oh. I refuse a nap because oh, just... the feeling is just awful. But what yeah. they say is that... And a nap can take a bit of an edge off if you are tired, however, or a disco nap if you're going to go out that night and be mm. sort of partying and stuff like that. But it's it's really crucial how long you nap for. So it's been clinically proven that taking a nap for up to 30 minutes is revitalizing. But any longer than that, you know, you're out of the REM cycle yeah. and then it can just make, make you feel just, you know, pretty groggy. Yeah. And ugh, not so good. If you really want to go a bit further, you can go to 90 minutes. So... It's basically like this. You nap for up to 30 minutes or you go the full 90. Yeah. You don't go between 30 and 90. Yeah. Right? So an hour, not good. Because I've done that before. I've done like an hour's nap and felt dreadful. But if you do like a 90 minute, it's fine. Although I wouldn't really call that a nap, would you? 90 minutes? Yeah, that's just, that's more like a sleep. Yeah, it kind of is, isn't oh, it? I don't know. I'm all or nothing. I know. I just, I just don't take the risk. It's not worth the risk because I just wake up just so angry. <laughs> It's like so the Hulk. Worse than this. It's like falling asleep. The napping turns me into the Hulk. It's just turning good. green or I'm yeah. rage. Yeah, exactly. Just keep away from me. <laughs> well, the next one then could be Laura as well. Seven reasons you're tired. Your mood. <laughs> <laughs> no, people who are uh, you know a little bit down in the dumps mm. and a little bit depressed, they're often quite sleepy as well. And it's basically because depression doesn't necessarily make you sleep more. It just makes getting out of the bed tougher, mm. which can lead to excess sleep. So it is a bit of a difficult one. If you have suffered from depression or you are or it's something that you acutely feel down in the dumps about, it's natural to wake up in the morning and not want to get up. That's a bit of a sign there's something not quite right. Mm. So again, you need to you know tackle that. Um, it comes hand in hand as well with finding a lack of energy. You're quite lethargic yeah. because you just don't want to do anything if yeah. you're feeling that way. So I definitely feel that, you know, if you have any of these symptoms, it's important to get it checked out because there are ways it can be helped. So, you know, think about that. And lastly, on the list of reasons you may be feeling tired is you could be deficient in your minerals. So, you know, what we eat, I've said it before, you are what you eat. It's, it's quite a profound statement, but it is true. If you're not eating the right food, your body doesn't repay you, you know, in kind. So you're going to start to feel a bit rubbish, actually. So if you're not having correct vitamins and minerals your body's therefore deficient in them it will start to drag in that sense 
So magnesium plays a vital role in maintaining our blood glucose levels and our health and concentration. So a lack of it can make you feel quite lethargic. Um, you'll find magnesium in leafy veg, nuts, um, but you can also have it in a supplement form as well. So, you know, definitely try that. And, and you know, I don't think it's a bad thing to take a multivitamin. Mm. Multivitamin a day spans across all the vitamins and minerals that you need. And if you feel that you don't have the best diet or the best routine, then why not take one? Because it'll just perk you up a little bit. So these are some signs just to have a think about. So if you're driving right now and you're feeling pretty tired on your way to work, mm-hmm. maybe you didn't have a bad night's sleep. It could be that. But if you had a great night's sleep, you know, eight hours undisturbed mm. and you're still feeling tired, you've got to think about why is that? Are you over-exercising? Are you not eating enough for energy? Not getting enough vitamins? Are you not drinking enough? Or like some of these things I've said, maybe you're feeling a little down or something. So mm. have a think because there will be a reason. We shouldn't be feeling like that. When you're on holiday, you feel kind of like full of life. Mm. So you should sort of feel like that. And it's so difficult because sometimes if you're stressed, obviously stress yes. is another one that can just kind of exhaust you without even realizing it. I would find I sleep really well after a day of sunshine. Yeah, You know, oh, just nice. sometimes to get out in an afternoon and spend some time in the sun. Could be a vitamin D top yeah, up. it could be. You know, yeah. All these types of things you yeah. just don't know. Uh, but we all kind of, I mean, everyone has a sleepy day, but whether it's something a bit more. And it's, and I think it's acceptable if you've been traveling, you've been ill, you've been really busy, like you said, at work. If there's a reason, then it's okay. Mm. But it's when there's not a reason and it's becoming a bit too common mm. that you have to think, well, wait a minute, this this maybe isn't right. So I'm going to go with the hydration. I think it's most people's problem. Get that water on. Get your <laughs> yes, of water out. definitely. Drink that. I'm going to be back here on Wednesday. Um, we're chatting on Wednesday about 10 ways to a flat tummy. Nice. Could do yeah. with those. Nice. So tune in. <laughs> yeah. See you on uh, on Wednesday. Yeah. Then. See Have you a good then. Week.